Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsOfEvilEast.com. CardsOfEvilEast.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Enjoy the cast. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choke Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And today, uh, we're going to do a quick little Ask Me Anything type uh, cast. Since we mean me anything. Sam, yeah, we, we do mean anything. Uh, since me and Sam will be attending the Kansas City Petite Cup this weekend, as well as, hopefully for me, the Petite Cup Finals. That's what I'll say. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll both be attending both. Yeah, Sam's already booked his ticket for that one, so... Uh, yeah. So I guess, uh, Sam, do you want to read the first question? Since sure, sure, sure. So it involves some personal Okimoto stuff. <laughs> asks, will Cody Snodgrass shave his head if he doesn't win? I can answer that question. No, but it would be a sweet gamble. It would yeah. be a sweet gamble. Um, I mean, what what would it take? Let me ask you this, Okimoto. What would it take? So if he <laughs> does win, if he does win the Petite Cup, will you buy him a case of Opus 8? Oh. Now, would you take that bet then? Me? No. Yeah, no. you either shave your head or get like I don't know what a case costs. I mean, I, I get like, a case, but you know, what is that like six hundred bucks? Probably. Sure. All right. So, would you you wouldn't shave your head for six hundred dollars? No. Get no. out of here. No way. I do it for maybe, a lot less. Than maybe that. back in the old day. Fair enough. <laughs> so there's your answer. You want to move on? Let's keep, let's yep. keep going. All right. Next question. We got how mu- how many gill. Do you get for one hundred U.S. dollars? How much, Gil? I think is what he meant. But let me let me, let me ask Google. How much, Gil, <laughs> would you get for one hundred? This question has been asked before, right? How much? Nah, it doesn't ask. So I would just answer a lot. Okay. Okay. What? What? Spe- what? <laughs> speculation of a card being played the most. Also, guess the number. Uh, pretty easily Diabolus, and the number in the whole tournament would, I have no idea, the number in the top eight would be, again, really hard to guess, but I will say that the numbers in the finals would be three. I don't think two Diaboluses will make it to the finals, but I would guess three total. All right, on that same question, I'm going to say... I, I'm gonna go with Yastola, which obviously could very easily be played with Diabolus. But sure, yeah. And I would say, if you're playing Yastola, I think you have to be playing three of it. So. Oh really? How'd you learn that lesson? Uh, <laughs> nationals. <laughs> All right. Uh, next. Oh wait, no, no. We're moving on to the yeah. next post. Next. Okay, so yeah. This one comes from uh, Stephen, one of our local guys here. Uh, and he says, some say earth wind is for people who drive the speed limit. And just for the backstory on that, I said that, uh, Monday at locals as to my reasoning to why I wouldn't play earth wind. Uh, so just a heads up when I'm not playing earth wind, Kansas. Um, but if one were to play earth wind, which list would be the more versatile and preferable list going in? I actually get asked this question a lot. Like maybe, maybe every day. <laughs> it, it I, 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 at least, I ask you this question at least once a week yeah or something but, along those lines uh, yeah um and the answer is that i like the emperor right now a decent amount um i think the uranger list that steven played at the petite cup is probably close to the best list um it's it's pretty close it's a very very good list um going I mean, he just did really well. It's a great list. Um, but the Yuri Chalinka list that I came up with for the um, uh, reunion event, in my opinion, um, is actually just absurd if you know how to play it. But it's not for everybody. And um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. if It depends on your skill level. I think that if you are fairly new to the game... Um, Play the, the, the regular 11 package deck or whatever. If you're very experienced, I think like the 
Phoenix deck is pretty good. If you think you'll run into some Cleones, maybe just play the Yuri Chilinka package. So I don't know. Yeah. Seems all good. Uh, just ask. I should probably post them here. What do you think of the current state of the game? And do you feel like adding a six element would be beneficial? What is the best Earth card, and why is it Queen Ron? First off, is it Brain <laughs> Brawn Brawne Brawny? I think it's just Brawn. That's what I say too. But Brawn's a very masculine name. Anyway, she's a, very, she's a pretty masculine woman. So that's that's probably fair. All right, so let's start <laughs> at the beginning. What do you think of the current state of the game, and do you feel like adding a six element would be beneficial? Um, the current state of the game is awesome, in my opinion. There are so many decks, like, I just have decks and decks and decks I'm exploring for the Petite Cup. And we're almost Opus 8, and I have not explored all of the Opus 7 decks. Um, and I don't think it's very close. So, I, and I also don't think that they should add a 6 element yet. And if they did, I don't know what it would be or why. And then for the answer to the last question, why is Earth the best Earth? Why is the best Earth card? What is the best Earth card and why is it Queen Braun? Well, it's not Queen Braun. Queen Braun is the second best Earth card. The best Earth card is actually Shantoto since it doles for all colors and discards for all colors. Yeah, key that it discards for all colors, just in yes. case you guys didn't know that. So You learned. <laughs> um, let's see. What, so what about you, we... Cody? Oh, I'm what sorry. You, what do you think about the state of the metagame? Uh, I think it's pretty good right now, actually. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, now, that might change after this weekend. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm, I'm fine with the game completely. I think yeah. every every element stands a chance, even though people are hating on fire. I think it's still pretty good. But No, I think I think that fire is actually one of the best acts. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely still I'm testing against it for this Petite Cup. So. Yeah, it's so crazy because I think players like us won't play it. Because it's too reliant on its own draws. Um, but also, at least I have a very healthy fear of it. Like, I don't want to play against <laughs> it, no matter what deck I'm playing. Like, it's just, it's scary, you know? Yeah, and with it being a petite cup, and I know the guys in Kansas, they like try some crazy stuff. And it's oh, not for as, sure. It's not like a crystal cup, so it's not as serious. It's a little bit more casual. Is it, though? <laughs> I mean, do you think, you think anyone's showing up with a casual deck? I think I'm more worried about casual decks than anything else. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But but I think that people are nice. taking it seriously. Like, I'll have to actually read a few cards if they're playing casual decks. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, but no, I, <laughs> I'm happy with the meta right now. All right. And Queen Queen Braun is the best Earth card. For sure. Uh, so we'll move down to Tim Ask. Uh, what do you think of Robert Phillips and Bananas? I'll let you uh, take that one. So, be- memes aside... Uh, <laughs> Robert Phillips plays the best uh, water wind decks, and um, <coughs> bananas aren't good unless they're green. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Russell Perry, your opinion on the state of the game in terms of color identity and, and uh, utility between the different elements? It's a trap, isn't it? It sounds like this is a song. Let me let me read that again. Like this is like they're they're trying to. Russell is trying to get me to comment about the state of wind. Why don't you just ask the question? <laughs> like, is it broken that wind gets everything? And the answer is, I mean, wind sucked for a while. Like, let's let it have its time. I think, I think its time is near coming up. Like, it should, they should, like, just give all of the wind cards and Opus 8 to fire instead. And let's just see, watch the world burn. Um, Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of color identity, I think... The, the colors should bleed a little bit for sure. I think the reason that Yuri's not healthy is actually because Chalinka. Because um, Chalinka can only be played in the Windex. So, like, Wind already has, like, the best summon in the game, has the best forward in the game. Um, now, it, you know, if you, if you include Yuri as one of the best forwards, it has one of the best forwards to work with Yuri in the game. I mean, yeah, so that's what I think. What about you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I agree with everything you just said. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what he means by color identity. So like um, lightning has like part of the identity of lightning is that it can reduce power, uh, reduction. It okay. can have haste. Um, it can have first strike, but that kind of bleeds into fire. Right. And then, um, haste also bleeds into wind. 
um, and reduction also bleeds into water. So it bleeds. It has a little bit of everything, right? Um, well, the other, it shares something with all the other colors. And then water has its own thing. It has reduction. It has bounce. Um, that type of stuff. It cares about the number of units in play. Um, it cares about other, you know, it, the, all the units work together. Um, whereas the problem with wind, and maybe this is where Russell was going, is that uh, it has literally everything. <laughs> um, and then Yuri gave it Dolan Freeze. It gave it the only thing it was missing um, from the ice color type uh, and Dolan Freeze. That was first strike haste. Unblockable. Um, Reactivation. Reactivation. Yeah, I don't think it can bounce. Am I missing yeah. anything? I don't think it can bounce. Theoretically, it can stop bounce with Ritz. Um, so it, it, it does quite it a bit. Still this card. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I forgot it had Zidane's, uh, both Zidane's. So the only thing it was missing was being able to freeze things. Um, so thanks, Yuri. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> and they can remove backups. They can do everything and win. So, Right. All right. Next question. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What What are you playing days one and two so I can play test against them? Dylan okay. asks. Dylan, uh, well, first off, there's three days. Uh, there's a warm-up tournament on Friday. On Friday, I am either playing Mono Wind... Mono Earth, some sort of removals deck, or my Monsters deck. Um, same answer for days two and three. And legit, I don't know, so good luck testing that. And I can tell you that Cody is playing Mono Ice or Wind Water, and uh, good luck testing against that. I mean, realistically, like, you shouldn't spend any time testing against the decks that you think we're going to play, um, because the, the chances of you getting paired against this is astronomically low um if you lose to the random deck so like if you just test your deck like let's say you know that cody and i are going to go and play mono ice you just test your deck the, the, the oh i can beat mono ice i have this plan against sephiroth i have this plan against vein like i you know i, I got a plan against the setzer combo and there are, i have these this option against renoa like i'm ready for the deck and then like your opponent's just like turn one wall get a soul back uh play um Play Gaddit, play Belias, give Gaddit haste, attack with uh, Gaddit, give Wall haste, attack with Wall. Well, you're dead. Like, <laughs> and then next turn you're like, okay, that's fine. It's just one matchup. It is what it is. But then you lose to like the guy who's like, well, I'm just gonna play the most powerful deck as long as it draws what it needs to, and they just drop like Alisai turn one, and then you die like two turns later. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too worried about people necessarily know what I'm playing. I, I really don't know what I'm playing. And I'm certainly not going to tell anyone the day that I decide on what deck I play outside of um, Cody, uh, Jake, um, Ben, Aaron. If those guys want to work together, I'd be willing to tell them uh, what decks I plan on playing. Um, but what I would say focus on is make sure that your deck has a plan, um, that your deck has a strategy and your deck has answers to cards like, um, Yuri actually just make sure your card, your deck has a card answer to Yuri and probably yeah. Catalumma would be a safe bet too. Like, like, um, like for me, it was Ruban, like Ruban answers both those cards just fine. Um, you're not super happy about killing the Catalumma with Ruban, but it, it is an answer and you do have to have an answer. So don't worry necessarily what we're playing. We just, uh, have a plan A and B for your deck. Right. And if you, if you've been listening long enough, you know that me and Sam are probably going to finish our deck list like two minutes before we walk in the doors. If that. And, and they'll probably change drastically. Like, And there'll be some scribbles. Oh, yeah. Numbers have changed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm known for like thinking Emperor is really good and always cutting it at the last minute. Just what I do. I do think it's good. I'll probably cut it. <laughs> um, who is... Top five trolls. Not who are. Who is top five trolls in NA? Rank them from one to five with one being the best. Okay. Do you have an answer for this or do you want me to give it a shot or? Top five. Um, hmm. I'll, who do you think is your number one? We'll, go, we'll just start there. I only have like three, I think. Oh, it's very obvious that um, the number one through three spots are somewhere between Okimoto, Tim, and RB. Okay. I think somewhere between those. Um, I would only say that I'm in the top 10 because I really just, just don't give a care what anyone thinks. So it's just like <laughs> I have no I have no filter. It's like whatever. Yeah, um, I, can see, I can definitely see Oki being in like either first or second. Oh, for sure. Think, who, who would be second some, for you? 
I think some of the past trolls. Oh, like Max? like have like. <laughs> yeah, or like I feel like some of the older trolls. I don't know if that's the proper term, but have kind of like toned it down. So these, so Oki is like leading the new set of trolls into the competitive. It's season. quite unfortunate. Yeah. You know, my problem with Oki, honestly, is that I really think that although he was around for the inception of the whale emoji, um, he is a part of that chat. He doesn't, I feel like he just doesn't grasp it. You know, it's overused. And, uh, you know, we got to slow down and understand the purpose of the whale emoji. Um, I'm really, I think he used it on his question too. Oh, I have no doubt. Let's see. He, he's got to start, not on that question, but he's he, he's got to start respecting how important the whale emoji is in a grander scheme of things. Um, and, and, and until then, I just can't take it seriously. Okay, it was somebody else commented on his question with whale emoji, so. Yes. It's just, it's just spreading like wildfire. Oki's number one troll. Okay, yeah, we'll just, see, yeah, for sure. We'll call it there. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Uh, let's see, we got, we got some more questions from uh, the troll himself. <laughs> Who do you which not we, want which to we appreciate? Yeah, yeah, d- absolutely. Uh, who do you not want to face at the Petite Cup Finals? I'll go ahead and answer this one first. Uh, wait, that's like the finals of the first day, or is that the championship? I think that's the. Ch- you know, I took it as the finals of the first day, but I think it's definitely the championship. Well, we answer both. Okay, first day. I do not want to face Lopez in the finals. Okay. The sec- the second day, uh, I don't want to face Lopez in the final. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, Lopez is uh, now, you know. Hopefully, hopefully it'll just come down to us playing, and then yeah, a national champion. Somebody, yeah. some, somebody will get a cool little hockey puck trophy or something. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> All right. Um, what about the top three reasons going to a Crystal Cup? Oh. Um, the community getting to hang out with everybody. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I want to try and get my ticket to nationals or worlds. Obviously, for sure. Um, I don't know if I can think of any other two answers. That's pretty much. I like road trips, so like, sure. <laughs> like driving to Kansas, like that's a fun trip, I guess. But yeah. So, who do I not want to face at the Petite Cup Finals for me? Um, Jesus, you know, I was thinking about the playing on stream and stuff and like the pressure that goes with it. Do you remember when Lopez put his EX burst into his break zone so he didn't take the damage? Oh, yeah. How was that? Like, like people did not jump all over him. Like, there's just like accidents happen. Yeah. You know, and Lopez is one of the best players in the world. In fact, a national champion. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't Earth Braun, so. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's which one changes the game more? I mean, when you just hit an EX burst and it goes to your yard and you can devout it back and you don't take the damage. I, mean, I don't know. To be f- I'll come up with, Lopez was running pretty late that day. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I remember. Like, Cause, cause like I was shit late, late. We're all I was the on him. Seed and I, I was the ninth seed and I was like, so wait, if he doesn't show up, do I get to play? <laughs> like, but uh, which answer that'll no. be his excuse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm not faulting him at all, actually. Like, mistakes are made. And I think I've done that. I think I've fasoyed, like, a, a fan. I put, like, a femoral somewhere, put the fan for on top, fasoyed, and then put the fan for in my yard and be like, oh, wait. Well, that's going to happen. Anyway, that's irrelevant. I was trying to think if Chris would be a person I didn't want to face. And I don't think so. I think, like, I legit wouldn't want to face you or, like, Jake or. The thing is, I had a lot of fun in the finals. Like when I played against Aaron, like I had a really good time and we were just having fun and laughing. Well, same thing whenever I play against like Ian. The problem is, is that I get too relaxed sometimes and I don't think about things and I let things slip. And so when I, but when I play against um, strangers or people I don't know, I'm much more serious and careful. And I, you know, when I want to do well, it makes me nervous to play against friends. So I'd rather play against people I don't know. And the finals, as much as I want my friends to make the finals, if, you know, so 
who I do not want to face in the finals is my friends, but then I'll be excited there in the finals, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. What are the three reasons for going to the Crystal Cup? Um, the top three reasons is 100% is for me, like hanging out with people and going to the community, going to dinner, doing the after party stuff. Like that's a ton of fun for me. I love that. Like I, that's why I'm traveling to petite cups. You know, I drove to RVA. I'm flying to Kansas. Like these are not major events. I mean, they're treated as such by the players and, and no doubt the competition is that high. Um, but I just love hanging out and seeing people and spending part of the, uh, part of the community. Number two reason would um, be that I really want to grind for that spot for nationals for sure. Um, I think maybe the world spot too. I don't, I don't, I don't, I say that, but when I'm playing in it, like last year, like I didn't even realize that like, Oh wait, I just qualified for nationals. And then like, same thing when I was in the petite cup um, at the RV, uh, not the RVA, but the um, reunion one, I was like, I lost on top four. I was like, ah, that was good. I'm glad Ian won. Like it was fun. And then, you know, RB's like, well, you qualified for the finals. I'm like, Oh yeah. So it's always a second. It's always an afterthought, but I'm always still really excited about it. So the qualification part's really cool. And then the third reason is probably because I like to do well and to prove myself as a deck builder. I like to build my own decks and uh, I enjoy that. I like to see uh, my list doing well. Um, and, you know, the two things that really does help is it helps my sponsor uh, sell cards and it helps our podcast grow. Um, you know, the, the better that we do as a team, it tends to be the more people that listen. Um, if you look through the views, you know, the better every time we do well or something along the lines, like our views, our views go up. So for me, it's about the community. And, and that's the reason we do the podcast in general is for the community. So, it you know, one feeds into the other, which is great. Um, what would you suggest we do as a community to grow the game more? And why is it posting videos of Cody doing Fortnite dances? Uh, did he just answer his own question? Um, similar to, to other questions that people answer for themselves. Yes. Um, what would you, let's answer it honestly though. What would you suggest to do as a community to grow the game more? It's a really in-depth question, right? It, it, there, there's not like a single line. Like one of the things you can do, and one of the things we do in Tampa, I don't know if you guys know, uh, the Tampa scene is actually just lit um, and it's filled with absolute ringers. Um, we try really hard. But, you know, during tournaments, we're all business. No no take backs, no mistakes. Like you make a play, you made a mistake, it happens, we move on, you're going to keep playing. Um, if someone doesn't want to cut, there's no pressure. If someone doesn't want to split, we're just, we play it out. Um just depends on oftentimes it depends on the time of the day. But as soon as that's over, we all open our packs, just take the foils we're missing and give everything else out all the time. We give away our promos. If we already have a set of dice, we'll give the dice to someone else. If we have a set of the promo foil promos already, we'll give it to someone else. I think I had seven unit promos at one point. Um, and I gave them away all uh, for free. Um, and and it, it just really helped in growing the community. Uh, we had a magic player who wanted to come out and borrow a mono red deck. Uh, like the Warrior Light deck, he actually ended up top fouring with it because the deck is so good. Um, and he's like, oh, I really want to play this, but, you know, the, I, I, I have to order the cards and stuff. And I said, well, you know, don't worry about it. I actually have the entire deck extra that's not foil at the house. I will just give it to you. He's like, well, how much would you want for it? Nothing. Like, you can have it. You know, it, what, what's the deck? Like 12 bucks, you know? Something like that. So <laughs> if, you want, if you want to grow the community, don't be um, don't be selfish. Just... Give away your extra stuff. Do as you can. I mean, I get it. I came from Magic, and, you know, when you had an extra Jace, you certainly didn't give it away, you know? When you had these extra expensive cards, you certainly didn't give it away. Uh, but if if I were to get on my Facebook uh, Messenger chat and I said, hey, guys, can someone give me a Minwoo? I'm missing one. I would have one tonight to show up with, and they would give it to me. Right. So yeah. that's what I, I think. I definitely agree with, uh, like, giving away your extra cards, like, from pack bowls for instance like whatever the new guy or new guy or gal is at like locals we'll pull out our foil that we want obviously from our packs and then give them the rest some people give away their foils or their promos depending on like what like you said whether or not you have it already or have a play set right um i've hosted a demo day at anime st louis last year that had like i think 24 people showed up which was way over what we were expecting we're doing that this we weekend were- at a game con in tampa um my wife and uh jacob are running it i think zach's volunteered to help out um we're actually just we're running a a, one of those booths 
at a game con. But yeah, I think that definitely helps. Um, just because it gets to like a, a larger crowd of people, like sure. a larger scale of people. Because like some people might go to like those conventions and might not stop in like your local card shop, right? Just we're just randomly and like see a Final Fantasy poster. Yeah, absolutely. So I think anything like that would help grow the community. Right. All right. Next uh, question. Let's see. Uh, Arvin asks, "What are your favorite EXPers?" I'll have you start with that. I guess. All right. Sure. Um, it's kind of a, a trick question because my favorite EXPers like to see uh, like when my opponent hits like self uh, seraphy that's great um but realistically like um my favorite ones as far as like car that just feel nuts when you hit them is probably yojimbo like it's just in titan like those two cards are just so good off ex burst and they always feel good uh a couple other really really good ones is like sarah um, the five drop Sarah just feels really good in the Moogles deck when you ever hit it from EX Burst. Um, as far as like my favorite style of EX Burst, like when I'm trying to style on people, like Zero Must is absolutely the best EX Burst to hit. <laughs> I just I love that card so much. It has nothing to do with my obsession with uh, Final Fantasy IV. I just I love that card. I've had great experiences playing that card in the deck and doing very well with it. Um, so overall, that's my favorite EX burst. I don't put it in every deck. I'd much rather, dude. You know what? I always it's so frustrating. I always like I'm like, why am I always talking about Earth cards? Like, I hate Earth, <laughs> dude. I've always said I've hated Earth. And like, when was the last time you saw me not play an Earth deck in a tournament? It's nuts. Uh, I don't I know just, if you ever have. Honestly, <laughs> I just I don't like what Earth is. I I don't like big dumb idiots. And it's like, oh, wait, you know what? Actually, it, green was my favorite color in Magic. Mm, it's just big dumb idiots. Okay, well, no. I'm just, I, I keep finding myself being like, what? Why can't I just accept that I like Earth? And what it is 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 I like water so much that because I like control decks that I want to play those decks. But it tends to be that I mill out, I mill myself out with, with water decks. So that's why I don't play them. Anyway, what about you, Cody? Uh currently my favorites are probably just kuja at the moment oh well, it's a really good one to hit very just, frustrating just gen- yeah genesis on a on an ex burst is always good Absolutely. Uh, but some of the ones from the past would be like uh opus to pain to grab the like your riku or your yuna that feels really good uh and then five drop steiner was another one that i, I that's probably like. still that's still top five for me like yeah like it just feels good like yeah the card just probably that's probably my favorite ex burst or maybe, maybe even like the your first Valifor if you have the other two in hand. And you can yeah, like that's just that's just being silly though. Yeah, you don't need them. No, you don't. No, but then you like mill them a few times and wipe their board. Yeah. Hey, so let's play Steiner this weekend. <laughs> I'm down. All right. Hundred percent. You heard it here first. We're playing Steiner this weekend. All right. That'll be your, that'll be the Friday deck. <laughs> <laughs> if you could go to what? Oh yeah, that's fair. If you could go to one Crystal Cup major tournament, and the only deciding factor was this: would you choose a tournament two weeks prior to a new site release or two weeks after, and why? That's a really good question. And I actually answered that a little bit when talking with uh, Zach earlier today when we talked about. Um, he just was like, "Well, you expect to do well at the Tampa Cup, obviously," and I'm thinking like, "No, like." I am so unfocused at the start of a format that, like, I'd much rather have been playing a deck. Well, I also switch decks all the time. I don't know, Cody. Will you just answer this question? <laughs> I'm gonna get myself I, an aneurysm <laughs> thinking about it. It's a good. I question. would say I would say two weeks prior to a new set, because, um, like you said, when a new, when a brand new set drops, I'm trying. Like, I want to try everything. Sure. So, like, for instance, when Opus 5 dropped, I was like, oh, this Orphan card's really good. I'm going to put this in my ice deck. And I looked at Thought Maturge, and I was like, this card's terrible. I'm not going to play that. I think it depends, too, like, on <laughs> what op- Opus you're in, right? Like, so Opus 3, mm-hmm. uh, 4, and 5, I I really liked playing at the beginning of the Opus, where the decks weren't necessarily solved. Um, the community has grown in such a way. FF decks has, like, polarized things sort of to uh, how um, uh, a TCG player had... Um, or Star City had in Magic, where the well known de- the well known decks are very uh, spread very quickly. Now we have people playing Octagon online, so the format solved a lot quicker, and it makes the end of the meta game a lot more um, solved. Um, 
that being said, I mean, if you if you saw what I'm trying to work with right now, this is this is a stack of cards I'm trying to build for Kansas. Um, so I'm still trying, but <laughs> the 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 deck the meta game is somewhat solved right now. Um, but still, I'm gonna make some cool decks. So I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. I'm glad that you answered it. Um, but if I had to just pick one, two weeks after the set because it's really exciting times and it's, and like playing for big points during that is very stressful tampa is going to be stressful as hell for me but i'm gonna have a good time so right uh so let's see alan also asked how do you want opus 8 to shift the meta and how would you accomplish that if you designed the set well they're, they're doing a good job right now um i think and this is kind of a scary answer but in order to shake up the set, you need to match the power. So you were seeing a lot of cards that are very powerful. Um, and while that's somewhat scary in a vacuum, maybe that's what you need. If you if you look back in the day, right, like think about like uh, how good Al Cid was, right? And how good Minwoo was and how Shantoto. And people just claim that those were the best cards that have ever been printed and, and will be printed. And those cards are somewhat considered unplayable by many right now, right? Be, so what we need is because the power level has been brought up to those cards and still certainly Shantoto is a very insane card. Alistair can outright win you the game, right? And Minwoo, if not dealt with, if not strategized against, can't be beat in some in some cases. Um, so I, I think the way they shift it, if I was designing the set, is to buff the power level of cards carefully. Particularly in some elements. I think it's safe to buff the power level of Lightning it's certainly safe to buff the power level of fire. Um, and it's certainly safe to buff the power level of dark. Everything else I'd be a little worried about. Um, and just make sure that those colors don't bleed into other things. Like, like even though I'm excited... Okay, here's a, here's a perfect example. The Category 11 characters in Opus 8, like... All the good ones I've seen that I've enjoyed really are not Earth or Wind. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> let's explore some Star Civil decks outside of Wind. You know, let's explore some 11 decks outside of the same color pie that we're always seeing. Um, so that's cool. That's how you do it. You make cards that are bonkers like that. Yeah, I think Robert Phillips has always been asking for a fire kick Nazo, so maybe we could get something. Would it deal damage? Ugh. Probably it, it'd have to. It'd but, still be really good. Yeah, I think I think it would still. Be, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it'd be great. I mean, you don't have a way to bounce it, but you maybe have ways to reoccur it. Like they'd be cool. Like fire needs more reoccursion. Right. That you know maybe. when you talk or about. Draw. Yeah, I don't think draw power. It's just not a fire thing mechanic in my opinion. Like that's fair. I mean, it has like Belize and Vaughn, but like I don't like those. I mean, those cards are very good, but I don't like the mechanic in fire. I think like. Fire should have more like Noels, Phoenixes, like cards that reoccur. I think those are really cool cards and a dynamic that not a lot of other colors have. Devout, uh, Sid Hayes, you know, um, there are other cards that do it, Lena, uh, but it would be cool to see Fire do it better. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, um, Alan also, oh, go ahead. Do you have something? No, 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 I was just, you go ahead with this. Okay, so Alan also asked, should Title, Limited, or any other formats get their own competitive season and structure? yes yes but but also no <laughs> uh title is not a balanced format um the games are very polar it's it's almost like when you're playing legacy and magic and like you don't have the force of will you know like if you can't answer your opponent's cards you sometimes just lose that being fun, title is really fun, and I'd like to see it supported more. What I would like to see is if you want to support title, do more leaderboard stuff um, for local events and include title tournaments in that or something like that. Uh, as far as limited goes, I'm not a great limited player by any means, or at least, at least I don't believe that I am. But I think that it should have its own sort of structure and be a part of competitive season. Not in the way that they designed it originally, not as like... You spend all this time grinding day one um, with one deck, and now you got to play a limited deck for day two. I hate that idea. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but sure, you could do a Crystal Cup where you play the first three rounds as constructed and then three rounds as um, 
title or limited and then three more rounds is constructed. Like, I'd be fine with that. Um, switching back and forth and making them equally weighted, I would be okay with. Yeah, I, I don't think it deserves an entire, like, competitive season, but maybe certain events like you could do like maybe like a title like petite cup or even like a series of title petite cups or something along those lines Mm -hmm. or maybe even a crystal cup if there was enough demand for it fair enough i mean they did they did the sealed crystal cup at gen con last year and it was pretty big success so yeah Uh, let's see is there a deck mechanic you think can counter the meta today mainly curious about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles builds and Daddy Tar, as in Daddy Little Cactar. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. A, a deck or mechanic. Um, so, yeah, sure. Like a card like Minwoo, which is going to tie into our next question, counters both of those decks. Um, it, the deck needs to be built right, but it certainly can be. And um, I think we'll bleed that into the next topic. But yeah, you know, it just, it just depends. <sighs> Dataluma is a really good card, and I am glad that it exists for certain reasons. You know, in fact, let me just take that back. I'm glad that Dataluma exists. I think it's a very good card. I don't think it should be banned. I don't think it should be changed whatsoever. I think that Cactar is the mistake, and not because Cactar is a more powerful card, but because Dataluma with other cards in the format aren't broken. There are certainly ways to ping it, like Pelinor, that just aren't broken. Um, but the what's what makes Dataluma like a, a, a more fair card is like decks like mono fire actually have to have a, an answer without just like trying to like f- brute force their way through. It, it does present a roadblock for, for aggressive decks. And I think that's a good and healthy thing so that you can't just have a uh, mono ice or snowbirds just snow everything down and just attack. Like it's healthy in that way. Uh, whereas like Cactar, in my honest opinion is not a healthy card. It's too cheap for what it does. Um, it probably wouldn't see nearly as much play at two CP, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, so the way you counter the mechanic is, is you play cards like, uh, Minwoo, I guess. I don't know. Minwoo seems good in the meta, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think Minwoo is great. Um, a card that I haven't seen played a lot is Ranger. Yeah. Wait, Ranger's People, great. Yeah. I like that card just completely shut down wind or wind earth it and stroll is also still very good against both of those decks i mean sure they can dole it and freeze it but like okay like it's still good um so let's just move on john schreiner asked why is minwoo so good well john the answer is because you're playing it in a deck that is very good john schreiner plays the prince deck um and so while since john is playing a deck where it complements his deck then it is a very good card and I will just say that um, overseas, particularly EU, they, they legit think that Minwoo is not a good card. Here's the problem with the rationality of that thinking. It, first off, is that it's a bandwagon, right? Like a lot of times we see people here just mimic whatever they say over there and, and just treat it as a holy gospel. And that couldn't be further from the truth. First off, we have different metagames. Um people play very different decks and to just accept that the, that it's one way or the other absolutely is not true. Um, the thing, the thing about Minwoo is Minwoo is not a good card for a CP investment for a solo investment. It's just not, it's, it's negative CP almost in today's constructed and Opus seven Opus eight constructed, but it is a combo piece and an important element at protecting things. Um, in certain ways and that's why it's good because it's a piece of a puzzle it's not it is not the solution it's not the end all it's a piece of a puzzle it's what stops them from like minwoo with emperor for example or or minwoo with cleone like minwoo with these cards that stop them from putting together their their puzzles i mean i think that's important and minwoo is absolutely a card that can be played around but typically it's in the decks that they want to go to the late game, uh, big earth wind decks, you know, uh, with like, uh, the, the, the Barts, um, <clears throat> the freelancer Barts that like attacks twice or whatever. Like those decks were really good with Minwoo. Um, even like some warrior light builds are possibly probably really good with Minwoo because they, they, they don't take a lot of damage. Um, the, my monsters deck was Minwoo is probably one of the best decks. And certainly in John's deck, Minwoo is the best deck, or Minwoo is the probably one of the best cards. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with everything you just said. I think Minwoo was probably like one of the first like I don't know like OP car. I don't want to say overpowered, but like for instance, like you had Minwoo in Opus One, Emperor in Opus Two, Genesis Opus Three, and like so on and so forth. Like sure. Daluma Opus Four. I think Minwoo was probably that card for Opus One. Sure. I know like Golbez obviously was pretty big then too. Right. But but nowadays, you know, the the difference is too is that it's not overpowered because like. If you have ways to deal with it, like Archer um, and Hecaton, right? Like those are two ways that you deal with it, and they're they're heavily played cards. But there's a lot of pressure going on too. So like you can't just afford to always Archer your opponent's forwards, or I mean backups, and you can't afford to Hecaton them because there's a lot of pressure going on in the games. And if you just take a, t- a turn off just to Hecaton something, you will actually fall behind. Um, right. And that's what what it makes it still good, in my opinion. And I think it's, I think it's good that. Minwoo counters like Earth Wind, but Earth Wind also has the outs to Minwoo. So yeah, it's a, kind of... it's a very healthy checks and balances. Unfortunately, right. we don't see that checks and balances in Fire. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, with that, we'll move on to Robert Meadows' question. Uh, so he says Arata one, Ban one, and Full Art one. And we'll answer that part first, and then we'll go to the rest of his questions. Sure, go ahead. I didn't, I didn't put a lot of thought into this one yet. Um. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Never mind. I don't know about banning a card. As you're, I don't really have any issues with any cards at this moment. You're wrong. Maybe uh, Yuri, <laughs> but I like Yuri, so I don't want, I don't want to see it go yet. Fair um, full full art. Uh, I would go with Zach Fair or Zach. Oh, Opus. that'd be an awesome freaking full art! Holy crap! Right. What even set did he come for? Opus three, Legend. Opus three or two. I think it's three. Yeah, it's gotta know. be three. I could look it up. While while we're talking, I'll just look into my binder. <laughs> I think it's a three legend. Fire then, fire binder, my my least open binder. And then uh for my errata, I guess I'll say Maybe you can only use one Yuri ability per turn. Per turn? Yeah. You're correct, Opus three, card number twelve. Yeah, that would definitely Well, I don't know if we can do a full art legendary, but yeah. I'm breaking the rules, so well, they, they didn't specify it. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, that errata is definitely only being able to use one Yuri effect per turn. Okay. So my errata would be two, one of two cards. I know I can't do that because it says one. I want I want to stick to the rules. Okay. <laughs> if I had to stick to the rules, I would errata Captar to deal one K damage to your opponent's uh, forwards. Um, still good with cards like Barbarisha, still playable with cards like Orlando. Um, so not outside playable, less playable, uh, still good with Diabolus, like very much ways to kill things with one shot. So not a bad card, still has its three CP ability, you know? So yeah, I would probably have read of that card. Band one, uh, probably people would think I would choose a Lua. I, I legit would ban Yuri. And uh, again, not because I think that it is broken. I think he's fine, except part of the color bleed problem earlier is that you're just incentivized to play him, right? Like you were talking about trying to test mono water with Yuri. And it's like, well, how insane is Fasoya? How insane is Galdez that you're just like, well, I'll just play Yuri instead. You know, um, we're seeing it in mono lightning builds. Um, it's obviously the best card in the wind water deck besides maybe pain. Um and then, like, and Mono Wind is absolutely just insane. Um, so it, like, legit, I don't know why you wouldn't play this card in Mono Earth, possibly, with the exception of sometimes you just want bigger, badder idiots. So, like, Galdas is, like, <laughs> very tempting for me in my Mono Earth decks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, that's the one I would probably ban is Yuri, but for deck diversity, not because I think it's broken. Similar to how I would, like, I didn't think Gasper Thaumaturge was broken. I just thought it led to really unfair f- games that weren't fun to play. Um, and so that should have been banned, and I'm glad that it was. And I think that Yuri's similar. Uh, you have to answer it right away or you lose the game, like, pretty on the spot. Um, and that's not necessarily an issue where, because, like, you have other cards that are like that, like Sephiroth, um, Zazat, Gilgamesh. Um, that you have to answer very immediately or lose the game. Um, but the diff or even Paul would be a great example, but those don't go in every deck and they can't go in every deck. So that would be the one full art one would very easily be for Um, 
it'd just be a really sick looking card. Like really sick. I was gonna say, and isn't that one that they can't full art? A mono art. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. They could just use a different art. Yeah. yeah. What if they did lightning for Soya? How would you feel about that? <laughs> With the same art? Yep. Sure, I'll take it. Whatever. <laughs> it still look cool. All I right, mean, any uh, follower would look cool, so. <laughs> this, I feel like this question is kind of targeted towards you. Uh, would you rather play against a turn to a Lua with no EX count or be two backups against five? I would rather play against a turn to a Lua with no EXs in my entire deck. Yeah. Being two backups versus five is just. I often say that, like, when I'm playing against the Warrior Lights deck, for example, like, if my opponent could be like, well, I'll let you start with two backups in play if you let me start with you two damage, I would just be like, yeah, every, every day, sure. Yeah, right. you probably start me at like five damage and give me three backups. Let's go. You know? Um, I mean, I value backups quite a bit yeah i i absolutely agree yeah, turn to a lua i've dealt with that so many times with running very little to no ex burst and oh i got an answer to this i got an answer bold opus eight predictions are you ready i didn't think about it so uh -oh. just now i got i got an answer there will absolutely be a ban that happens during opus eight or maybe it's not true or an opus eight card will be banned soon after Okay. And I'm and I'm almost certain of that. I'm almost certain. And, and, and the reason that I'm almost certain of that is I do think that the metagame has not developed all the way yet. When I say the metagame has been solved, it's because we are playing some of the best decks and they're very hard to beat. But I do honestly think there are better decks out there and that we haven't discovered them yet. And Opus 8 has such an insane power curve right now that we're seeing. Very, very good cards um, that I absolutely think that there will be a shakeup that happens or a rotation. I don't think the rotation will happen. It, it would be a solution, but I think, and I don't want it to happen. Let me just be clear. I, I like the way we're at right now, but I think that a card will be banned and that will probably be healthy. If I had to guess the card that would be banned, could be Yuri, could be Valfor, could be Diabolus, but I think a ban will happen during Opus 8. Interesting. That, that that is pretty bold. Um, right. It's very it's very not likely. So I'll admit it's not likely, given we've only seen two bands. I'm trying to think. Since well, when Opus Seven was about to drop, we saw like the Errata on Zidane because we people had figured out the Don Gesper combo. I don't know if you remember that. Well, no, it, it wasn't even Don Gesper. That still works. It was just Gesper. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about when you could Zidane. Oh, like, you you can still you can still do that. You could like. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. It untaps the... the oh, they banned Gesper, but you could. Because it untaps the Gesper, then you do it again. And then you Zidane untaps the Don, so then you use Don to untap the Gesper. That still works if Gesper wasn't banned. The problem was that, Gesper, okay. that Zidane's misprint was that it didn't say win character, so you could just right, Gesper right. them and then untap the Gesper. Uh, okay. But that actually isn't even an errata, an errata as far as, like, they made a mistake on the card. Like, that was just a translation error. Like, and the, the okay. Japanese card is very clear that it has to be a win character. And how, how the translator just missed an entire word, I don't know. Yeah, and it's a very important word. Like, <laughs> a color um, identity. Could you imagine if Cognazzo just said the number of characters you control? Like, oh, sorry, we, we missed water. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, let's see. Bold Opus 8 prediction. Uh, I will say that... Hmm. I will say that... Ice Lightning becomes the number one deck. That would be my bold opus. Man, opus. that is so bold. You either know about some spoilers that nobody else knows about, or you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like if I said fire, it would kind of be like, well, I don't know. Fire's bold. Fire would be number one, but like, we that's, all know that's not living in a dream. Yeah, like I want to be proved wrong, but fire has some really good cards coming out. Right. Sorry, should 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 have specified. <laughs> Fire the good uh, cards on the way. Let's see. I think we have one more. One more question. question. All right, from Ramon. Uh, do you expect to see a resurgence of mechanics from chapters crossover into Opus, i.e., overdrive, equipment, level up, etc.? Um, the answer is well, yes, for sure on overdrive. Um, but, and I think they kind of confirmed that. 
In fact, I, I'm pretty sure they confirmed it during the fanfare. Um, but yes to all of it, because the, it, it just depends on the lifespan of the game. If the game is dead in f two, two, three years, then no, of course not. I don't think we're going to have time to get there. Um, but as the game grows, eventually you have to grow the mechanics of the game in order to encourage uh, more exploration. Um, and some of that comes with new mechanics. Um, you know, basically a lot of those mechanics are just um, a theft or a borrow from other games, which is, I think, totally fine. Um, but yeah, so I think Overdrive will come out quickly. I think equipment and level up will be later, but certainly depending on the lifespan of the game, sure. Like, of course, I mean, that applies for anything, right? Like eventually given an infinite time span, Final Fantasy and Magic will share the same cards. Like, <laughs> but you know, of course and we're talking about that, like realistically over the next few years. Yeah. I could see it with several of the abilities. Um, I just hope that they're careful with their balance. And I think that they're doing a good job so far. So it's, it's that's a tough job, right? That's just that's a real tough job to have. Oh, it has to be. Like we we think that like making like a fire cognazo would be fine, but they're probably like, well, we can't do that because we know about this busted combo or something like that. Now I don't actually know what overdrive is from chapters, so I believe it's similar to a magic mechanic of um, kicker. So you could. Um, is that like pay extra to get pay extra to get an extra effect and i think that we have that in this set coming up right like we have the but they don't call it that but we have the earth card that does that for the light for example you could break a light or dark card if you pay two extra you can remove it um so what about like uh ice emperor where if you pay an extra one they discard does that qualify as that or no no because it's more like when you play the card wait yeah ice emperor is it when you play the that's cards, when they draw, right? No, it's when you play it. You can pay four, or you can, instead of paying three to play them, you can pay four. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then and then you do draw a card whenever they... No, you don't something when they draw a card. You don't freeze if they draw a card, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's similar to, I, I believe, Overdrive. It, I could be mistaken in what, what I thought Overdrive did, but that, I think that's what it is, and, um, yeah. And then I feel like equipment... Equipment would have to be something, like, cheap, because... I feel like the game is way too fast to, like, I don't know, to try and, like... Well, if they were going to make equipment, wouldn't, wouldn't like, the Lava Spider uh, be, like, equipment? Like, why wouldn't they have made that an equipment? Like, that's the perfect equipment card, right? Yeah. Like, like you cheap. equip that and then something attacks, yeah. Yeah, like, I couldn't imagine, like, a big equipment card. Unless it's, like, break something every time you swing or something like that. Right, yeah, there could be, like, a, um, like... Like a Buster Sword, for example, that did something crazy, like a six mana Buster Sword. And when you attack with a sword, break something. Um, uh, an, an interesting, uh, an interesting equipment. If I had to design one, would be like um, some sort of supporting equipment that made it to where the cost of um, specials abilities w did not require the discarding of the extra card, but. And place you had to break this equipment or something along those lines mm -hmm. would be interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I could see that being a really cool card. Yeah, but yeah. So that's right. about it. Is there anything else you want to add, Cody? I, I will add one more question for us. And, sure. Uh, I think we could both answer it. We'll have different different answers, I'm sure. Uh, so, who do you predict will be in the top four of the day of like the day one, like the actual Kansas City Petit Cup? Who do I actually think will be in the top four? And I believe invites do pass down. So if you get if you win, you're gonna get fifth place in there. So <laughs> no, I don't think invites do pass down. I thought I saw RB say something about it. I don't think we can pull it. I'll pull it up after the cast. I think yeah. they do. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't think they do. Why would they? Why would they pass down? I think, think they do. They, they fun. They they would they would follow the petite cup. I mean, it's just a petite cup. There's nothing special about this petite cup, right? None well, of the I'm other talking. none of the other invites passed down. I thought they did. From no, so like the like uh, RBA ones did not pass. Down. The RBA ones did not pass down. So Ian took up a spot. Alfred took up a spot. I ate a spot. Hmm. Yeah, that's my understanding. Um, you could just count the number to be able to easily tell that, right? 
Like you yeah, need it have... perfectly twelve. Yeah, you have that in front of you. But yeah, I get that. But... Um, the top four, man. I would love to say that like my team's gonna be top four. I'd love for you and I to be top four. Realistically, people don't know what it like. Realistically, you're not gonna be top four, and I'm not gonna be top four. Like, realistically, it's very hard to top four a big tournament. Like, it's hard, man. Like, <laughs> it's, it's really hard. Um, but I think that you, I, uh, Ben, because I think he's hungry. Ben's hungry. Been, been hungry after last uh, after the last CC. I can tell you that. Um, I think that that would be my and I mean and Chris is just too good not to include. So if I had to pick four, and that's no slight to anyone else going, that would be my four. Me, uh, yourself, Ben, and Chris Lopez would be my four. Though Aaron's so close too, man. I don't know. Like those guys are so hungry. <laughs> that like they're gonna be the grinders for sure dude i i am excited to play against them because they're excellent players but man it's gonna it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a very competitive weekend what about you yeah if you had to pick four so if i had to pick four i would have to obviously i would want both of us to make it well you already got your invite you don't need any more trophies you're good but <laughs> i don't but care I about need- i don't care anything about till the finals i want that luna not or that that uh luna freya the Luna Freya. All right, so say Sam, say I make it. You're already there, so I'll try to pick three Kansas guys. Um, I would have to say Lopez. I'll say Kyle Peters, um, just because he has a very extensive card game background. Like, yeah, he's, he's a good. He's a good, he's a good player. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. Like a very great player. If he like, played a better deck, he would do better. <laughs> and like in between the time where like Final Fantasy has been on like a like sort of like quote-unquote downtime like during mm-hmm. like the petite cup season he's been like going and crushing magic tournaments i saw that yeah yeah like it's so like i have he's to doing very well like i have a feeling he could end up winning day one. Oh, that'd be awesome um, and then i hmm, probably ben ben he was so competitive last season for sure and i don't and feel f- like that's that's stopping anytime soon and analyzes his mistakes and learns from them but yeah yeah, so I could see. Really, I mean, and like you said, Aaron is right up there too. Yeah, it's it's gonna be tight, right? Yeah. So bold prediction here, okay. Let's say, and look, you guys watching the stream are gonna just have to get over it. If if I play against Cody in the top eight, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say right now, zero chance. I don't say Cody. Would you like to price split? <laughs> Like, there's a zero chance. Like, why in the world would anyone expect me to knock out my teammate out of the, 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 the switch, uh, out of the top four so you can't play the game too? Like, it's just, it's never going to happen. And that's awkward, which is one of the reasons that maybe the, maybe it should drop down. But even then, like, what if we, what if you just got sixth instead by losing to me? Right? Like, right. There, so there's, there's not a solution. People just have to accept that, like <clears throat> when you're when you're really good friends with someone, and, and that's the thing. I it would be I love all the guys to death, but it would be between you and Jake would be the two guys that I'd be like, dude, you got it, man. Good luck, good luck in the finals or good luck in top four. Get there. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, and it, but even playing for the last round though, like that's different. Like if you and I play the last round and one of us is likely out, we're gonna have to battle, right? Because that's just gambling. That's just, you know, like, that's All just right. straight gambling. Um, but yeah, once we once we secured our spots and top eight or top sixteen, I, I imagine they're doing top eight and like prizes are guaranteed. I'm like, yeah, let's just split prizes and you know, I hope that people are okay with that. And if they're not, they can watch a really crappy match where I uh, I just keep turn wanting random backups into play and well i think i think if we if it's on stream i think we make it just look like a disaster like like just but a see, complete disaster. that's what i was against that's what i'm against i'm so against faking it you know and i know of matches that have been faked on stream i 100 oh, yeah. know they've been faked um and i'm not a fan of it uh i get it though but i do get it because people want to watch their stream but like that's so i don't know it's not my style, 
Um, but, you know, maybe uh, if I play against Cody and the top cut, we will just play it out all the way. And then, like, right before I crush him, right before he <laughs> miscounts his thing, I'll just be like, man, I got to poop. I can see. You know? <laughs> I can get up and walk away. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? You can't do that. No, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that right now. Like... <laughs> it's going to be a while. You can put the stream on hold for an hour or you can give Cody the win. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so in regards to day two, how many people do you think will actually be there for day two? Okay. Four, this is a, this four. is a good prediction. Let's, let's see. Because right. my prediction is five. Like, well, like don't, you don't and tell the four. me, don't tell me that because That's what I'm saying, because first off, all right, here, here's let's, let's, let's make a, let's make an actual educated bet. Okay. Let's let's bet something on this. In fact, I will bet you. Oh man, what's a good bet, Cody? I will bet you a plushie. Okay. Okay. That my number is closer than yours. A plushie's like like a Final Fantasy plushie. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I got an extra one. I got a cloud one. Give me give me a little cheap one, or you can get me a Pokemon one from from Collector's Cash. I sell like tons of them for cheap. Yeah, I'll take the bet. Okay. All right. What's your I'll number? Take the bet. <laughs> My number is six. Six people in the finals? You're so wrong. So four, so four let's from. Let's say four don't make it. Okay. Um. Well, I can win just by saying seven. All right. Good game. You lose. All right. So you can buy me whatever plus you want, but I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say seven, and I'll be closer. You know, if it's four, great. And if it's five, you got me. And if it's six, good job. You nailed it. But other than that, yeah. If it's four. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, are you not, are you not gonna show up, <laughs> dude? It, it might be possible that one of the top four doesn't show up. Lopez, <laughs> or shows up, or shows up really late. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go with seven. The bet is set. Um, I'm going with six. If six point five show up, I'll let you have it. Um, six point five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's been it. Uh, I can't wait to see a lot of you guys this weekend. I'm super excited. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we got anything else we got to say. No, that's it. All right. We will see you guys in Kansas on Friday, somewhere Friday night. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, join us. Be on, be on the lookout. Uh, but we've been the Choker Bros, guys. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snight Prime. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Choker Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out carsevilis.com and use promo code CHOKABROS to get 10% off your next order.